Ask friend if he knows anyone who had access to some tools I needed to finish a project. Says sure, he knows a guy from work that would be happy to help. Apparently he was interested in the same kind of art, but warns he's a bit off. Drive friend to work one day. He introduces me. Guy seems really distant and withdrawn, shakes my hand, and we chat a bit. He seems real interested in the woodwork I was doing, and we talked about sculptures and such for a little while. Things we'd learn, tools we used, etc. Guy warms up a bit, and I ask him if it would be alright if I checked out some of his stuff. He hesitantly agrees. Kind of like when you're trying to come up with an excuse but just can't. He tells me to swing by that night, and we can chat over a few beers. Okay, sure. Later that night I get a call, it's the guy. He sounds a little shaken up, says things are chaotic at home, and right now isn't a good time. Says he'll call me sometime. Whatever, sure man. Two weeks go by. Guy calls one afternoon, says things have settled down, and he wants me to bring over some of my works as well to compare and blah blah blah. Sure dude. I start to head over and notice this guy lives in the middle of fucking nowhere. I had to call him just to find his house. It's at the end of a long driveway. Beautiful acres of land, the driveway is littered with trees, and his house is actually pretty nice. As I come up to the driveway, something strikes me as odd about the trees I'm passing up. They all have faces carved into them, facing the driveway. Twisted, pained faces. I didn't think much of it, I make morbid stuff myself. And in fact, I was very impressed, the amount of detail was staggering. Looking out onto the tree line of the property, every tree had pained faces looking in on the house. Almost like the woods were watching you, wherever you were. This actually kind of creeped me out. Looking out was like seeing a hundred or so white faces, just crying out. Kind of like they wanted your attention. Knock on the door, guy answers with a beer in hand and a much friendlier demeanor than before. Helps me carry some of my stuff in and shows me around. Guy seems pretty cool. Begin to notice each room has one of the same damned faces hanging above the doorframe. The more I saw them, the more I felt sick. Up close, the faces were more detailed than I had imagined, almost surrealistic. I asked him what the focus on the faces were for, and the guy kind of tensed up and dodged my question. Upon entering his workshop, which was fucking sweet by the way, he seemed to have other interests besides creepy faces. Entire seven-foot sculptures of women, men, animals, etc., all very well done. And one with a tarp in the back, just chilling there. He says it isn't done yet, so I don't bother. It was right in front of the door that I think led to another room. We begin working on stuff together, trading stories and times we had accidentally injured ourselves. Suddenly subjects change, guy asks me what I think about God. Tell him I'm not very religious, but I don't rule anything out. Guy starts getting a bit loud, saying that God is a blatant lie. He was told so. By who? He went kind of silent for a moment, and then abruptly asked me if I believed in spirits. I gave him the same kind of answer. It's possible. He starts looking around the room, as if seeing if anyone is around, and then his voice goes soft, and he kind of whispers for a moment. I see things in the woods. At dusk, I can see their shadows. Sometimes they whisper from the trees and I can hear them. Fucking nope. Obviously the guy is mentally disturbed. Egg him on, ask what they tell him, etc. They tell him that God is a lie, only thing after death is darkness. He says they laugh at him and leave dead animals at his tree line. Officially creeped out at this point. He said for a while they visited him at night, and each face carving represented a different spirit that had visited him says that they can't stand looking at themselves in death, so they don't step within the tree line, thus why he has the entire thing carved out. I'm pretty silent at this point, and I hadn't had goosebumps so bad since I was a kid, and chills just running up my spine. He told me they talked to him from the tree line at night, and they try to get him to leave his home. I eagerly try to change the subject. Guy looks down and just keeps talking. He's pale as a sheet, and was obviously genuinely terrified. He even kind of looked like he was welling up. Tells me I'm the only person he's told. Knowing I'm a stranger, he apologizes. Says he's scared and doesn't know what to do anymore. I try my best to awkwardly console the stranger, and the guy actually kind of starts to break down. I think he needs help, but it's not my place to give it to him. Regrettably ask him why he's afraid. Says the faces don't work anymore, 
and two weeks ago he had something terrible in his living room. Huh? He walks over to the tarp sculpture and pulls the tarp to reveal the most mangled, terrible thing I have ever seen. It hardly resembled a human being. It was terrifying to have imagined this guy seeing it standing in his living room. Shortly after a loud bang on the wall to my right, I nearly jumped out of my skin. This guy didn't even flinch. Then again, bang! Then it continued on and on, continuously, like hail hitting on a tin roof. Guy screams, STOP IT! And it ceases. After that, I grabbed my shit, tell the guy I'm sorry, and got out of there as quickly as possible. As I'm leaving his home and driveway, I look into the rearview mirror. The tree line is darker than I've ever seen. Guy calls a week later and apologizes. Says he was silly and everything is okay now. Friend says Guy quit and never heard from him again. I love cryptid shit myself, so I was pretty excited when I recently found out that my late grandfather had an encounter with one when he and my father lived in the Soviet Union. Granddad, an electrical engineer, gets called to a town near the shores of Lake Baikal. Lake Baikal is known for, among other things, being fed by 330 rivers by emptying into only one. Having an incredible ecosystem of thousands of species, half of which are only found there. Being the deepest lake in the world. Being the biggest lake in the world, by surface area. And being the oldest lake in the world, as well as being the center of all manners of legends and creepy shit. So, my grandfather arrives by the time it's getting dark, so the client insists that he stay the night in the hotel. But not before inviting him for supper. Over the meager meal, they discuss details of the problem and possible solutions. As the sky darkens, the client makes an odd remark that sounds out of place coming from the mouth of such a fellow. Do take care not to leave your room in the hotel during the night. There are creatures out there. After checking how much vodka the client had drank, my grandfather asks him what he means, and after a little hesitation and a request not for him to talk about this, the client obliges my grandfather. Around the forest, we find huge mounds of droppings, with whole skeletons intact, of sizes everything between and including wolves to bears. These ship mounds are left by giant snakes that live in the lake. This was the only doubtful part of the story, as a snake usually wouldn't want to venture into the freezing cold lake, though it would make a great deal of sense for such a creature to reside in burrows underground. Reports of sightings of the creatures are only heard once or twice a year compared to the often seen mounds because, well, human bones too fall under the purview of everything in between. And when a set is found, reports of a missing person from as far as a few towns over are never far behind. But try not to think too much about what I've just told you. Just stay in your room for the night and do have a good night's rest. My grandfather had little trouble not thinking about it as he made his way to his room that night, as it frankly stunk of giant snake shit. So, giving the whole silly thing no more thought, he changed into his nightclothes and swung open the room window to let a cool breeze in. He studied the schematics a little longer until he was satisfied with what he had figured out, then got up to extinguish the light to get some sleep. Turning towards his bed in the now dark room, he sees, peeking through the opened window, the head of a huge snake illuminated by the pale moonlight, its further tongue flickering up and down. As any sane man would do, he ran into the closet and shut the door behind him. For not more than 20 seconds, he heard the most infernal thrashing of wood against wood, the leathery flesh and of papers and bed covers being whipped about at breakneck speeds. That small time felt like an eternity, as did the minute or so until he heard a rapping on his room's door and a man's voice. What the hell is going on in there? You've woken everybody up. I've called the police. My grandfather rushed out of the closet, through the wrecked room, and out into the hallway, slamming the door behind him. He gets accosted by the owner until the police arrive, who inspect the room, or what was left of it. Papers are all about, the furniture is reduced to splinters, and the bed covers were nowhere in sight. My grandfather collected his few remaining things and, as per police orders, was given a different room for the night. One of them stepped aside to talk to my grandfather. Don't open your window again. We don't want to come back here again tonight to recover a body. Or worse. The rest of the trip went uneventfully. My grandfather fixed the problem and promptly returned to Ukraine, where he and my father, then in his early youth, lived. 
but my grandfather did bring one thing back. On a trip to the Museum of Natural History, he brought it in between the pages of a book, meaning it was probably a scale. My grandfather shows it to the curator, who shows great interest in it. My grandfather relates the story of how he got in, the curator inspects it excitedly. The curator asks if he can hang on to it to conduct some research, and ensures my grandfather that he'll show him his findings. My grandfather accepts and parts with the thing, but the curator never did get back to him, but my grandfather did get back to the curator, after having some difficulty finding him. The curator responded almost angrily to being questioned about the item and his research on it. That thing you brought me was a hoax and nothing more. I decided I want nothing to do with the damned fake and I suggest you decide the same. And that concludes the story. Now the strangest thing about this story, at least to me, is that before hearing it, I had heard all sorts of strange going-ons in and around Lake Baikal, but never anything like this. The only thing that relatively comes close was a single isolated mention of a possibility of a Nessie-style plesiosaur type thing entering the ecosystem through one of the 330 rivers feeding to the lake, since one of those things could possibly be mistaken as a giant snake, but there's just about nothing else. Quite peculiar affair, isn't it? What's hiding, or being hidden, at Lake Baikal? Hello everyone, I wanted to say thank you for watching. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed these tales, and remember to subscribe if you want to hear more in the future. Click the bell icon in order to be alerted when I have more stories to tell, and until then, don't go near the woods.